I didn't even know I had an older brother until he showed up outside my school that afternoon. It was two years ago. I was a sophomore. My little sister Paige was a freshman. The original plan that day was to hitch a ride to a friend's house, where we'd probably team up and knock out our homework as quickly as possible. The plan changed when we exited the building and someone called my name. Parker! Hey, Parker! My attention was immediately grabbed. I glanced around for anyone familiar. All I saw was a guy in his late twenties leaning against a fancy car parked in the street. He smiled and waved me over. Parker! Over here! Double checking to make sure there was no more Parkers in the immediate range, I decided to at least meander over. Paige was practically clinging to my backpack as we walked over. She was a little shy, and I was expecting any second for this stranger to look away and find that other mystery Parker. But he didn't. He lit up and looked right into my eyes as he walked up to him. Wow, Parker, you're going to get taller than me, aren't you? I frowned and made sure to take a sidestep in front of Paige just to put myself between the stranger and my sister. Can I help you? I asked. He looked a bit sad for a moment before he sighed and nodded. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't remember me. You're only two, and Paige here. He stood on tiptoe to look at Paige. She was just a little baby. I must have looked super confused because Paul reached for his wallet and pulled out a photograph. I'm Paul. I'm your brother. He said, handing me the photo. It, it was so... jarring. There was my mom and dad. I was standing in front of dad with a big old smile on my little toddler face. Mom was holding Paige. And there was a boy standing between my parents, about 13 or 14 years old, with the same blonde hair that both me and Paige had, and a grin on his freckled face. I'd never seen this photo before, but it was real, and in my face, and impossible to deny. I looked back up at Paul, who was back to smiling. His freckles had faded away with age. His teeth were straighter and whiter, but he still had the same goofy smile, and I could just about tell that we had the same shape of our eyes, the same ears that stick out just a bit. But the resemblance was uncanny. Paul reached out and clapped his hand on my shoulder. We have a lot to talk about. Come on, you like McDonald's? Paige cleared her throat. We should probably just go home. Mom and Dad, they're going to be at work until what, five, six? Paul glanced over my shoulder and looked at my, well, our apprehensive little sister. If they're still the workaholics I remember, they'll not be home for hours. We'll only be a bit. I just want to catch up. Oh, bye. I, I should have known better. So should have Paige. But even if we did, we still got into the backseat of Paul's car. And he drove us to the McDonald's a few blocks away. Lunch that day had been pretty garbage, so getting a McDonald's treat was more than welcome. Paige tried to decline, saying that she wasn't that hungry, but he offered her an Oreo flurry, and like magic, her appetite came back. As we sat in a booth, I stopped inhaling my burger for a moment to confront that elephant in the room. Why didn't Mom and Dad ever tell us about you? Paul was not at all surprised by the question, but he answered with one of his own. You're a good kid, aren't you? Always home on time, straight A's, chores done without a single complaint. Uh, I mean, I have a B in algebra. I stopped myself. Before I nodded. I guess so. Paul glanced over at Paige. You too? He said. Paige also nodded, and Paul sighed, nodding of understanding. Yeah, that's about right. Nothing wrong with that, but I was a bit more... Uh, high maintenance. I pushed my fries away and I leaned forward to listen. Paige, despite her apprehension, was looking with just as much interest as I was. Guess you could say I had issues. I mean, I was 14, but I was already getting myself into heaps of trouble. Paul drummed his fingers on the table. 
My grades were awful. Got into fist fights at school. I'd snuck out at night. I mean, once I got out of there, I figured out I wasn't like most kids. But one day, mom and dad just sent me away. Paige gasped quietly, her eyes going wide. They sent you away? Where? She asked. Uh, Tennessee. Friends of dad lived down there. They took a weekend trip and dropped me off at the door with a suitcase and a note. Paul shrugged. I don't blame him. I mean, I was a holy terror. But man, it does sting a bit that they never even mentioned me to you guys. I'm still family. Or at least, at least I thought it was. A wave of sadness and disgust washed over me. Sad that I'd never gotten to know about Paul. Disgust that our parents just gave up on him like that. Most 14-year-olds go through phases of being difficult, right? It sounded like he just needed some therapy. Some freaking support. And our parents just made him someone else's problem and erased him from our lives. Paige finally lowered her defenses, reaching across the table and resting her hand on his. I'm sorry, Paul, she said. Paul smiled, reaching across the table to ruffle her hair. Not your fault. Not yours either, Parker. You were just babies, after all. But hey, I'm here now. Let's make up for lost time. Don't waste food. But if you want anything else, let me know. And feel free to ask me literally anything you want. I got nothing to hide. I didn't want anything else, but Paige did get an order of chicken nuggets. We munched, got to know each other, and got to know our older brother. After Paul left the house he was dumped at, he had traveled all over the States. He didn't want to go home without showing he was worth something, he said. He worked all sorts of jobs, waiter, mechanic, janitor, but it was his most recent job as a manager at a small store that he ran into his girlfriend. Well, girlfriend. Do you guys know what a sugar mama is? Paige nearly choked as Paul handed us his phone. A picture of himself and a woman that was probably in her early 60s. Sure, she was pretty okay looking for her age, but damn, she was without a doubt older than our mother. That's Elaine, he said, pointing at the woman. Elaine lost her husband a few years before we met, you know, lung cancer, and she just wants some company. Specifically, she wants a cute company. He poked himself on the cheek, and I happen to be adorable. I couldn't stop from laughing as I picked up the phone to get a better look. Dude, our parents would kill you. I said, listen, in life, you're up to your ears in debt until you die. You start off rich or you marry into a good life. I mean, uh, Elaine and I aren't married, he laughed at the thought of that, but I could do whatever I want and, and she wouldn't care as long as I'm home every night and then and ready for some snuggles. He gave a pointed look at Paige, who scowled at the innuendo, but I just cracked up. True to his word, Paul did get us home before our parents. Once we all got out of the car, he tossed the keys to me. Registration's in the glove box. She's paid off and only a few hundred miles on her. You have your driver's license, right? I was too stunned to do anything but nod. Then you're set. Think of it as a present for all the birthdays I missed. See you soon, guys. With that, Paul just walked off in the direction of the nearest bus stop. Of course, our parents had quite a few questions when they came home, and all of them revolved around the car in the driveway that was easily worth over 50 grand. I just waited for them to get all their questions out at once before I looked at Paige, who crossed her arms and said what needed to be said. Paul came to visit. Their faces were enough to confirm once and for all that Paul was our brother. Mom's face went white and Dad staggered back, falling into his armchair to probably avoid fainting. Mom took a seat on the couch, taking several deep breaths. He found us? She asked. Found us? I repeated, that earlier disgust starting to boil up into rage. We moved after... My mom swallowed. You're all right? He didn't hurt you? Hurt us? I snapped. Are you kidding me? Why did you never tell us about him? He's our brother. My dad cleared his throat. The half-brother, actually. He stared at our mother, who just looked at her hands. And you need to tell him to take the car back. When he comes back, give him back the damn car. I scoffed. No way! You can't afford to give me a car. If you want it gone, I'll just sell it and save the money for college, I said. Why didn't you ever mention Paul? Mom's head was bowed in shame. Paige Parker. Paul's not right. 
I didn't want to hear it. I just stormed out of the room. Paige right behind me. We had heard all we needed to. Our parents abandoned a kid just because he wasn't good enough. And Paul was actually not so bad now. At least we thought so, anyway. Paul showed up again the next day at school. Not at home. This time he took us to his condo, which was just as nice as you'd expect from a man who just given away a luxury car. We had a Skype call with his girlfriend, and Elaine really was nice, if not a little eccentric. If you're Paul's family, you're mine, she laughed quietly. So if you need anything, and I mean anything, just call me. I'll help you however I can. After the call, we ordered pizza and just spent the whole afternoon chilling out, playing video games, getting to know each other, and just getting to know Paul. He was competitive, but never a bad winner just giving tips about how we could improve. He gifted Paige a brand new laptop, perfect for homework and for playing video games. I'll get you your own car when you get your license, he promised, ruffling her hair and then asking what movie we wanted to watch. When Paul dropped us off late that night, he didn't come into the house, but he did wave at our parents waiting at our front porch. My mom just looked ready to die of embarrassment while my dad, I guess, he looked so stern to hide any fear that he had. We didn't talk to him. We just went inside to go do our homework. It went like that for a few weeks. Mom and Dad would tell us to stop hanging out with Paul, but since he was always outside school at the end of the day, we just hopped in his car and took off for another fun afternoon. Mini golf, arcades, wherever we wanted to go, he'd just plug it into his GPS and we'd spend an afternoon having fun. We even spent a whole Saturday at Six Flags. Paul had us take an overpriced picture and put it in an even more overpriced frame as his souvenir. I got a t-shirt, Paige got a stuffed animal that was almost as big as she was. And meanwhile, our parents were clearly upset, but we barely talked to them. I had resolved that I hated them both for cutting Paul out of our lives, and I was going to do the same to them when I turned 18. God, the fact that they moved after they left him to be someone else's problem so we couldn't find them? It pissed me off. Paige too. Her theory was that dad had given up on him so quick because Paul's not his kid. It was so tense at home, I wanted to spend even more time with Paul, so just to just to escape all that. And one of the final things we did was go out to a movie. But then we were all best friends, Paul, Paige, and I. We had so many expensive gifts, so many fun memories. We weren't even a little bit afraid of him. We'd gotten all the snacks that we could carry from the concession stand and settled into our seats when a handful of popcorn smacked into the back of my head. I turned around and intentionally groaned to see some unfathomably familiar faces. Paul glanced over to see the popcorn sticking out of my hair. What the? More popcorn flew through the air, followed by some pointed snickering and loud whispers. Ignore them, I said, pinching the bridge of my nose. They're just some jerks from school. Paul's eyes widened. You're getting bullied? He asked quietly. I wouldn't call it that. Especially since Evan is the principal's son. I glanced back at the group and glared at the middle one, who only proceeded to laugh and throw more popcorn. But they mess with me sometimes. It's fine. They just get bored sooner or later. I got in a thicker skin from this sort of thing. I was already one of the tallest of my class, but I was also the quiet guy who didn't stick up for himself, so I was an easy target. Paul turned around, and I swear it was the first time I saw that carefully placed mask on his face slip. The look in his eyes screamed murder. Fuck off! He growled at the group behind us. Evan mockingly, Ooh, what you gonna do? He asked, smirking like he knew he was untouchable. Paul responded by getting up, starting to walk back the few rows where Evan and his goon squad were sitting. I don't know what they saw, but I think Evan realized that Paul wasn't going to just sit and take it like I was. He threw up his hands and repeatedly whispered apologies. Paul stopped at their row and leaned in close to the boys that looked ready to shit themselves. He whispered something I didn't hear, and I think Evan did actually piss his pants a little. Paul straightened up. I heard him mutter, enjoy the movie. And then, he returned to his seat. Back to being fun big brother Paul, just like that. At least I wasn't getting popcorn thrown at my head anymore, so I brushed aside any concerns I had. That night when Paul dropped us off, he didn't stick around long. He said he needed to call Elaine. She had left him a voicemail earlier about how much she missed him, 
And frankly, that's all I wanted to hear. Yeah. This time, my parents were waiting in the living room together. They'd been going at it like cats and dogs for a few weeks now, constantly having whispered arguments. I think my mom was sleeping on the couch. Your mother has something she wants to say. Dad said. Mom just stared at her shoes for several painfully long moments before Dad added, Or I'll say it, and I won't be as nice. Paige scowled. What? You need to know the truth about Paul, so please sit down, Mom said, her voice barely above a mutter. I did take a seat across from them, but I probably looked as interested as I did during algebra. What? Mom looked like a woman defeated. L like your father said, Paul is your half-brother. But that's not the whole story. She swallowed before she sat up straight and finally told us the whole story. I met him at camp. I was a counselor. Your father and I were on a break. She glared at him while he just quietly scoffed. After he cheated on me with his tutor at college. So, I was bitter. I was alone. I was empty. But Paul's father, he was charming. Different, but charming. After camp that year, I realized I was pregnant. Paul's father, we... We, we couldn't be together, so... I just went back to your father, and I let him think that Paul was his. Until Paul was born, anyway. It was impossible to hide that. Dad shuddered. You gave birth to a monster, Andrea. What the hell is wrong with you? Paige blurted out. Just because he's not yours? I wasn't being metaphorical. Dad glowered at Mom, who seemed incredibly focused on the wall rather than any of us. Tell them, Andrea. Mom's eyes welled up. Paul was born a few weeks early, and he came out so fast we didn't even have time to pack up for the hospital, and when he did, he... he... he wasn't right. I, I can't even describe it. It's something you'd have to see to understand. Paul looks fine to me, I said. Because he wants you to see him like that. Mom rubbed the back of her neck. He can do that. Within minutes, he looked like every newborn baby boy. I, I would have blamed it all on the pain and hysteria if your dad hadn't seen it too. And sometimes he looks like that again. If it was only me in the room. Paige and I probably looked equally confused. Mom, you're not making any sense, she said. I, I know. Mom nodded before she looked at me. The scar on your stomach, Parker. Shaped like a triangle, is it still there? I hauled my shirt up to show it off. It had faded over the years, but it was still visible. From the time I fell, I said, That's not how you got it. Mom shook. For the first time in weeks, I stopped being angry at her and was now genuinely worried. Pa Paul was... He was mostly like any other child until you two came along. He was... He was a good boy. But he changed. He changed and I was... Afraid. Terrified. To leave him alone with you. The one time I did... Oh my god, I can't. I can't. Mom broke down in tears. Burying her face in her hands. Dad finally interjected. He was acting up beforehand, but your mom was taking a nap in the room over. I came home from work early and I found Paul in your room. You were just lying there, eyes glazed over, and he had his mouth on you. I nearly threw up. What? I had to have him repeat it. I thought he was just being a sicko, and I ripped him off, but it... Parker, you were bleeding real bad. Dad shook his head. You only started crying when his teeth were out of you. I looked at the scar again. My head was swimming. I couldn't breathe. He bit me? I asked. He was trying to eat you. My dad started to shake. It was with pure rage. I nearly lost it. He wasn't even sorry, Parker. He was just mad I interrupted his snack. Paige looked so white, she, she looked ready to faint. That doesn't look like a bite mark, she managed to get out. He bit him with his real mouth. 
My dad managed to get himself back under control after a deep breath. What you've all been seeing, it's not really Paul. He's not human because his father wasn't. I couldn't let him be in this house anymore. I began doing a research and I found someone. I thought you shipped him off to a friend. Not exactly. Ned finally looked a little ashamed. I found out more about Paul and what he could be, and I found someone who could handle him, teach him to get his hunger under control, but Paul ran away from them after a few months. We'd already moved, but I didn't sleep through the night for years because I was afraid he'd be back to finish what he started. I leaned forward, trying to wrap my head around this. How is he not human? I shook my head. That, this can't be real. It is real. My mom sat back up, wiping away some of her tears. I never wanted to give Paul up, but he... He would have killed one or both of you. We didn't have a choice. After the room stopped swimming, I got up. I need to be alone. I went into my room and I laid in bed for hours, just staring at the ceiling. I knew what I had to do, but I had to wait for everyone in the house to be asleep, even Paige. Even if she was part of this, I had to do this on my own. My alarm read 12.13 when I finally got up. If my parents heard me start the car, they, they would have been out of bed before I was zipping down the road towards Paul's apartment. I probably broke the speed limit, but I didn't want to wait. If my parents were telling a lie, I needed to let Paul know they'd lost their frickin' minds. Paul's apartment lights were on, and by then I knew where he kept the spare key, so I let myself inside. He was quiet, but I figured that he just drifted off to sleep on the couch while binging Netflix. He wasn't on the couch, though. I walked through the apartment, trying to hear him snoring or something. As I pressed further into the apartment, I... I didn't hear snoring. I heard this wet, squishy sound, like, like someone was wading through knee-deep molasses, and it only got louder as I headed for the spare bedroom. You used it for storage, he told us, so I never bothered to check it out. The door was it was cracked just an inch, and despite my better instincts, I pushed it open. God, what I saw, I still can't believe, even though it's been years. I, I can't believe it. I barely recognized the two corpses hanging by their ankles from the ceiling. Both were stripped of their clothes, completely drained of blood, and their torsos ripped open. Their bodies empty, except for some bits of flesh and bone. The third body was still twitching a bit, still had some color in the face, but still took a second for me to place him as Evan. I'd never seen Evan so... blank. There was nothing going on behind those empty eyes, and the thing next to him... I don't even want to describe it. It was humanoid, but barely so. It had two legs, but only one arm. Its gut stretched out so far it looked ready to topple over. The skin was baggy and all mottled blue and green, and its arm was shrunken, curled in towards its body like a claw. Its head was pressed up against Evan's gut, teeth set into his skin as it continued to suck blood and then whatever else fluids it could get. I saw its sharp tongue stab into his gut and Evan gasped before his eyes rolled back and shut. His body caved in like the monster was draining a Capri Sun, liquefied guts spilling into the creature's mouth and even some dripping down its chin. It, it finally pulled off when Evan was hollowed out. It turned in my direction. His triangular mouth filled with rows and rows of spines that never seemed to end. Its tiny eyes blinked so did I. And, and then there was Paul, standing in front of me, looking entirely normal except for being soaked head to toe in blood. Parker, he said, so softly, sounding so surprised. It jerked me out of my shock. I slammed the door and ran for it. I barely got to the living room before the back of my shirt was grabbed, sending me flying onto my ass. Parker, damn it, wait a second. I looked up, expecting to see that thing instead of my brother, but it was Paul, out of breath and looking like a genuine serial killer. Christ, you know how hard it is to run just after you had a meal? I thought I was going to die. I wanted to beg for my life, remind him that he was my brother, that he didn't have to hurt me, but I, I didn't have to say any of those things. Paul crouched down next to me, 
brushing his red-stained hand against my cheek. I flinched, something he didn't miss, judging by the hurt in his eyes. I wanted to tell you, but then there's just so much more to explain, and I just... I just didn't know where to start. I, I just wanted to say sorry for what I almost did to you as a kid, so I figured, why not give you something? Something to show I didn't want to hurt you. I swallowed, telling my legs to crawl backward and away from this blood-soaked maniac. But I couldn't move. I was, I was frozen. What are you? I asked. My father's child. A son of Bellavan. Paul shook his head, tears welling up in his eyes that looked just like mine. I'm so sorry, Parker. Back then I was so... so... hungry all the time, and I just... I couldn't stop myself. I, I couldn't, and those... those dickwads in there? The world's better with a few bullies gone from it, and this way... I won't lash out at someone else. Someone like you and Paige. I shook my head. You, you killed them. I glanced at that room where the three classmates were still hanging like meat in a freezer. You just killed them. I did. Paul nodded. And I think I saw what my father saw so many years ago. The apathy for human life. I did. And I did it for you. I finally ran. I finally got my stupid legs moving, and I fled that apartment, and Paul didn't try to stop me. When I got home, my parents were waiting for me on the front porch. I hadn't brought my cell phone. It's stupid, I know. But they thought that I'd gotten myself killed. I just hid in my room. I didn't tell them I was sorry. That they were right all along. I didn't think I needed to. Since then, my parents have divorced. I stay with mom most of the time. Paige stays with our dad. We don't see each other except at school or during holidays, and we sneak away from our respective guardians. It's rough. And we get by. I've never told her entirely what I saw that night, only that our parents were right all along and that we needed to stay the hell away from Paul. I sold the car. Paige gave away the laptop. One by one, we got rid of his gifts. Paul's just gone. <laughs> After Evan and two of his friends were reported missing, his apartment was vacated. He left without a word or a goodbye. The bodies were never found. I don't know if Paul just ate the rest or dumped them somewhere where they can't be found. I, I don't know. The nightmares from that night never... Never ending. The image of Evan just hanging there, letting Paul drain the life out of him without a fight flash before my eyes. And needless to say, I'm a bit of an insomniac. Hey, why is this all come up now? Well, because... Because I got a welcome letter for a job I never applied for. Alongside the letter is that picture we took at Six Flags. Got the words, I'm waiting for you, written on the back. It wasn't signed, but I have a feeling... I have a feeling who applied me for... And who's the one waiting there, so I'll be... Accepting the position. Next summer, it looks like I'm going to be a counselor. Camp Golden Oak. Hey there, kids. It's me. Mr. Creepypasta. I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to tonight's story or watching tonight's video. And if you guys would like to see more or hear more, then I'd appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. Or if you're listening on the podcast, then click the follow button. We're moving into spring, which means that uh, it's getting warmer some places. And also, that means that it's probably good for you guys to get a nice tall glass of iced tea. And if you've been here before, then you know that my wife sells things like tea. So yeah, check out Ivory Monocle Tea. It's etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea. 
And as always, I want to give a big thank you to all you guys who support on Patreon, patreon.com slash MrCreepyPasta, especially Jacob Schaefer, Jay, Zach, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Diana Krause, Katrina Beasel, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Miss Exandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Stricken, Ozarine Fox, Robert White, Andreas Garza, Snails Brennan, Legit Quad Feed, Fried Chicken 12, James Bruce, Chris Lovin, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, Justin Johnson, 1-800 Nightmare, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Jason Wilson, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Plater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Brian Arse, Cryptic Nightmares, Brennan Wright, Someone You Love, S-Man, Kiwi the Sloth, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Talon Karlick, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, and if you guys would like to join them on the list of people's names I mispronounce, you can always do so at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, as well as all those fine people in the description down below who help support this channel and keep the lights on and give treats to Hylas and Hercules. You guys, as always, are the real MVPs, and I love and appreciate every single one of you who support there or just support anywhere by watching and subbing. So good night, everybody and sweet dreams.